Bye. Pep Talk UK, Pro Bees once again. I'm delighted to welcome to this country for the first time, world champion. Mary McGee, how are you? I'm good, and how about yourself? I'm doing good. All good in the hood, as they say. All good in the hood. And call me Merciless Mary McGee. Merciless. Yeah, because obviously, you know, you're merciless in the ring. Is that right? Yes, yes. Talk to me about why you're here. Obviously, look, you know, Eddie Hearn said that he's got a surprise for us, and uh, Please enlighten us what that surprise is. Well, he invited me here at the last minute to um, do a press conference for a fight that he plans to have with me and Chantel in late October uh, to unify the WBC and the IBF world title. Wow, okay, all right. So how, so literally it was all last minute sort of thing and then you just took the Yeah, flight and... they called me and my manager asked me would I be available to come and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Cause I, I think I saw you online like a few months ago saying that you wanted the big fights etc mm -hmm. and um, put your name out there because we see Carissa Shields do that a lot yes. I mean I've had the privilege of interviewing Carissa a few times and um, I love Carissa. she's she's no filter she just yep. as I said to, as I said to her she just talks that shit she sure do <laughs> <laughs> and walks and we, it too yeah but you seem to be like you know a similar type of character like you're just straight up you shoot straight yeah I, I'm I give what I get so based on the opponent that I'm facing, how how they treat me or how they come off to me is how I come back off to them normally. So sometimes a lot of fighters try to intimidate me and I can't be intimidated. Coming from the hood, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's hard to intimidate me, it's hard to make me feel inferior. So when you give me a certain type of energy, I return it and sometimes I return it 10 times harder. Mm, 100%, you know, the good thing, you know, what I say to your camera is uh, women's boxing, is booming. Like yes. I remember like four or five years ago Eddie Hearn said, you know, this women's boxing is gonna really take over in the future and we mm -hmm. see some exciting fights and um there's a big wave at the moment. Yes. Of great women's fights. Yes, he has done great things in women boxing because it's not too many promoters that I really know mm. like give a woman a, a you know a chance and also uh, I don't really know what the pay is because I haven't fought for Eddie Hearns yet, but I've heard that he pays pretty well. Eddie <laughs> I heard he pays. The pay surge, yeah. Yeah. So, in women boxing, our money isn't the same as men boxing in America, from what I've been known. And I've heard that Eddie Hearns pretty fair with his pays, from what I've heard. So. Don't quote me. I don't know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find out in October, though. Yeah. I mean, look. I mentioned women's boxing booming. Um, you're, you know, we've we, we've seen a number of great fights over the pandemic. Um, Tate Taylor, we'll see, great fight. We've seen her against Tasha Jonas as well. I mean, do you feel like you know um, you're one of the fighters that can kind of move this wave even even higher than what it is right now? I do. I've been boxing for over 20 years this year, and for me. When I came along 20 years ago, it wasn't a such thing as an undisputed champion or people wasn't seeking to be undisputed. You were seeking to be a world champion or to beat the best. And that has been my dream since day one. So if fighting for belts leads me to getting in the ring to beat the best, then that's what I'm going to do. And it's like that's what the level we're on right now is fighting for titles or fighting the next champion that's in your weight class. So that's what I'm willing to do because those are considered the best fighters. So the fight against Chantal Cameron, uh, projected date, October the 30th? Mm -hmm. All right, so that will be on the Dillian White undercard. I believe so. Wow. Yes. Go to Arena on the fight night is a crazy arena. Yes. You're going to have all the Londoners, you're going to have all eyes on, on Mary, Mary McGee on that day. That would be nice. <laughs> Chantal uh, Cameron. Uh, what can you tell me about her? I mean, is that is she a fight that you rate? Uh, she okay. I know she's under undefeated. I know she had an extensive amateur career, but I don't really count amateur fights. Mm. But um, honestly, I, I'm she's one of the best fighters in my weight class. But I don't really rate any fighters above me. I've been experienced. I have a lot of fights. I'm 27 and three with 15 knockouts and for me I was undefeated at 17 and 0 once upon a time in my life 
And being undefeated is not always everything because I got a lot of experience in those losses that I had. And sometimes you never know what a person's going to do when they're on the bottom. So people seeing what I've done from the bottom, being 27 and 3, and then coming back and becoming a world champion. She's never lost. You know, she's never faced a fighter like me. So I don't know what she's going to do in that type of fight. She doesn't know. But I know what I do when I'm in trouble. Because I've been in fights with Holly Holmes. I went to South America and mm -hmm. fought Erica in her backyard mm -hmm. when she was 20 and 0. She was undefeated at that time when we fought. So I know what it feels like to be on the opposite side and all the fans are for the other fighter. I've, I've done it. So it's not really a big deal to me anymore. And obviously, look, the, the major objective is to, to unify. Yes. That's the goal. Yes. Right, My goal is to be the best. And if a belt comes along with it, I'll take it. <laughs> Makes sense, it. right? Yeah. Makes sense. Well, you talked about, look, some of your experiences in the game. Um, women, like, are getting the credit. You know, um, obviously, women have had to go through a lot of struggle before, you know, um, in sport, in life, you know, and it's, it seems like, you know, as Beyonce says, you know, all the women, independent, ah. roll your hands up. <laughs> yes, it's all about not giving up and continuing to push. When I first started boxing, they was only paying $100 a round. All right, okay. Yeah, it was no real money. I did it because it's my passion. I like to fight. I have an aggression in me that can only be let out in the ring. So that was really my main reason for continuing. And then when I came back to the sport, it was after I had my child. And I really wanted to show my son how to mm. continue to push towards your dreams, no matter the adversities or the things that you, you've been through. So I wanted to show him from my example. Obviously, look, you know, we, uh, we talk about great fighters in women's boxing. We're talking about, obviously, Carissa Shields and Katie Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me about their greatness also as well. You know, it's kind of inspired you. Ooh, the Carissa yourself. Shields, oh, she... She come from the same type of living background as me growing up in the hood and things like that. And then to watch her as a black girl, it's like looking in the mirror and seeing somebody else like yourself make it. And Clarissa's gold medalist. She's a champion in three different weight classes, MMA champion. There's just so many things I can go on and say about her. And she's a humble, very humble girl. She came and watched me win my world title. Mm. I called her and she was like, yeah, I'm going to come. And she came and supported me. And I don't know a lot about Katie Taylor. I know she is a hardworking young lady. I know she never slacks. She's super fast and she's always in shape and she's real kind. I don't know her personally like I know Clarissa. There's an argument out there about who the, the greatest is of all time, the greatest woman of all time. Obviously, Clarissa says you know she is the true quote. But over here, there's some people that back Katie Taylor. I mean, well, people are entitled to their own opinion, but Clarissa has the right to call herself what she feels she is. Like, you know, nobody had ever said nothing when Muhammad Ali was doing it, or, you know, any of the other fighters that boast about who they are. So if she feels that way, she has that right. And I respect it. I call her the girl, too. All right. <laughs> I do. You don't, you don't want to have an argument with Clarissa, man. No, I don't argue yeah. with it. I mean, because. It's a difference when somebody is saying something and they're not backing it up. She backs it up. So mm. it's like, prove her wrong. If you can't prove her wrong, then shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? A lot of people kind of mistake, you know, who she is. Um, I think she's all right. I've had the pleasure of meeting her quite a few times and yeah. do some interviews. I think she's all right. If you don't know her personally, then you're going to make your judgments off what you see behind the screen. But when you get to know her, you realize she really kind-hearted. She's she's soft-hearted. She's nice, and she wants to see other people succeed. But she's going to cheer herself on, and there's nothing wrong with that. She's just confident. People take it as arrogance, but she's just really confident in herself. I respect it. Okay. When you when you do uh, your preparation for fights, uh, are you in there with the, with the guys as well, the men? Yeah. See, when I started, it was no females, so I had to work out with the guys. So it's more females now, so I get a chance to work with some women, but I still have to work with the guys too. Hey, hey, what, hey we need to get the belt and show. We need to get the belt and show. Yeah, let me hold it up here. All right, beautiful idea. All right, look, what is your message to Chantel Cameron, October the 30th, the O2 in London? What's gonna what's, happen? What's my message to her? I mean, 
I don't really don't have one. I don't care what she doing. <laughs> I don't care how she train. It doesn't, none of that matters to me. I've worked so hard to get to this point. I'm not being me, period. So, whatever. <laughs> I mean, that's how I feel, honestly. Uh, it, uh, it doesn't matter. People do a lot of talking or, you know, they, they feel a certain way about another fighter because of what they hear other people say. I know what I can do in the ring, so I'm not worried about it at all. Alright. Um, well, you know what? Like I said, um, welcome over to the UK and I'd like to uh, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me in my belt. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully, look, I'll see you at O2. October the 3rd also as well. Yep. Um, all right, it's been a pleasure. Pet Thank talk. you. IBF world champion, Megan Okay.